Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Jacob Israel, that is. Eh, to my friends who know me. I'm glad that you pressed play. I'm glad you're spending some time with me. I hope you're okay with me coming to you from space. I had to do the virtual set today. You'll understand why at the end of the program. It's an interesting program. This is a crazy program. This is going to be one that people are going to be talking about for a while type of a program. So I hope you're ready. Because we're talking about my pillow. Yeah, the Stone of Destiny. This is a, a very, very famous stone that has been the seat of many kings and has brought and coronated many, many very, very important, famous, powerful people over the years, was the throne of King David. Was the throne all the way down. This story is an insane one. And it has a lot to do with me, which is even crazier. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell a story. I'm going to tell a story about how the Stone of Destiny was revealed to me and why I think for this program, you all better be buckled up. We begin our story thousands of years ago with a, a younger brother named Jacob, the twins. I did a show on Jacob and Esau. If you want to catch up, check it out. story goes, Jacob was sent from home. He was told to go find a job. And as he was on his way to go work for his uncle Laban, he's all alone. He finds himself in a certain place, just like we all find ourselves in a certain place. And he gets tired. And he looks around, as was the custom back in the day, if you're in the wilderness, right? You, take a, you, take, you look for a stone and you use it as a pillow. It's exactly what Jacob did. It's called Jacob's Pillow, Jacob's Stone. That stone today is used as the seat for many coronations going back thousands of years. That stone there is a prophecy about that when the Messiah, when the rightful, the chosen comes, and sits on that stone or comes near that stone that the stone will cry out. It's a prophecy about the world turning over to uh, just a bunch of imagination, a bunch of idolatry, a bunch of lies. Now why on earth would a goofy stone be held in such high regard? Why would it be so symbolic and so important? The fact that nations could go to war over this simple stone. It was just a stone. He was just used to uh, rest his head on that night when he was tired. Jacob, when he was on that stone, he had a dream. That's where we get Jacob's ladder from. And in this dream, he saw a ladder. He saw a ladder that started at the earth that went all the way up to heaven. And he saw the angels of God ascending and descending upon that place. And when Jacob woke up, it was a huge revelation for him. He understood that God was in this place. At first, he was, he was terrified. So, but at that moment, you, you know my video, I did the video called um, Take the Vow. It's about Jacob's vow. In that moment, it's a moment that I've had, a moment that I hope you have. In that moment, when you realize that God is in this place, this certain place where you are right now in your life, in that certain place. For Jacob back then, it was a place called Luz. <laughs> which means almond tree, which is interesting. That place was renamed by Jacob. He called it Bethel, which meant the house of God, because surely God was there. And in that dream, God said that I'll do this and I'll do that. And Jacob said, yeah, I'll do it as long as you take care of this, you take care of that and everything else. But it was in that moment when he woke up that he dedicated his life to God. Just like I did. Just like I hope you have. And he said, I'm going to serve you for all the days of my life, just like I have, hopefully just like you have. 
When Jacob woke up, he poured oil all over that stone and he anointed it, right? Symbolic of wisdom, that stone. There's, I, I mean, I've written on this. You can go to my website and see, but this is where the story takes an interesting turn. So this stone became sort of iconic, right? This stone was where Jacob first, he, he dedicated his life to God. It was a very important moment. This stone was then carried off because it was the place. It was as important as the Ark of the Covenant, which held the Spirit of God. In fact, the two were together. So that stone, what they did was they took these iron rods, these little circular rings like this, and they attached it to this stone, the sandstone. They put a little bar in it and they carried it everywhere they went. And this stone followed all of the descendants of Jacob. The stone became known as Jacob's pillow or Jacob's pillar. And it was upon this stone that David, King David himself, was coronated as king. Now many years would go by and of course, Israel always returned to their idolatrous ways where they forgot the truth of God. They left the truth of God for the lies of the land, for the beast system, right? They forgot. They forgot all about that vow that Jacob made at that pillar, on that pillow that every king and every important figure was coronated on. They forgot. Pharaohs forgot about Jacob and Israel ended up in servitude again until Moses would come along and so on and so on and so on where we we see this cycle of Israel you know uh, being sent into captivity and then being freed from captivity and then sinning again and then ending up in captivity again so what ended up happening was Babylon Babylon the great King Nebuchadnezzar now at the time Jeremiah the prophet was was the uh, the main man and see what happened was when nebuchadnezzar and babylon invaded they uh, they basically they killed off all the male heirs there, there was nobody left but there was favor you know jeremiah had found favor in the sight of you know the uh, the powers that be he ended up taking zedekiah's daughters and he, t he took th them as well as his uh, scribe and they they fled and then it was like a storm and they ended up well, historical record says, towards England, towards Ireland, indeed. In fact, that stone landed in Ireland, eventually. And so did the line of kings from King David. That in fact, that there is a prophecy that the Messiah would come from this area. The lost, hear this, the lost tribes of Israel. The lost, those that forgot the truth, those that forgot the vow, those that forgot about the stone. The stone, by the way, which I didn't know anything about until just a couple of days ago. And now I'm speaking about it as if it was my stone indeed. So here you have this one stone, this sandstone that Jacob, many thousands of years, had a dream on. Had us become so important that to this day, kings and queens in England and Scotland and more are coronated on it. And guess what? This stone, it's on display right now. People have forgotten, though, its significance. People have forgotten the vow that was taken. People have forgotten about Jacob's pillow. You see, bloodlines are a big thing in Scripture. Okay, being a blood relative, you t uh, Jesus um, was traced through the line of David, the bloodline of David. If you read the Bible, there are uh, big time descriptions of, you know, Adam gave birth to so and so, who gave birth to so and so, all the way down to Jesus.
Now, what happens somewhere along the line when Nebuchadnezzar comes over is these, these bloodlines, they get intermingled. Like God says, you know what? I'm going to mingle them with the, with, the, uh, with the these guys and the that guys. And uh, it actually even says beasts at some point. But it's symbolic about how the tribes of Israel they end up lost. They end up forgetting who they are. They forget who they are. In fact, in the book of Tephi, who was one of Zedekiah's children, who ended up becoming called the Queen of Israel and the Queen of Ireland. Who ended up over in Ireland where the Danites were basically seated. The tribe of Dan, the Dan Dan, <laughs> the Danites, they actually are intermingled among the population there. And so the Davidic line of chosen servants of God could come from Ireland as well. Now, why is all this so interesting? Let me tell you how I got to thinking about the Stone of Destiny. It all started about two days ago when I was driving to my car and I had a memory of when I was about 13 years of age. I went to this Catholic church called St. Rock's and they had this, you know, this thing where they take the poor kids and uh, for a week's little retreat and there were counselors there. I had a counselor named Abby. She was like 19 years old. She had red hair. She was very cute. And I had kind of like a little, a little 12 to 13 year old boy crush on her. At the end of the retreat, all the counselors got together and what they had to do was they had to do something that would sacrifice and show their love for the people that they were counseling and teaching and helping and encouraging in their faith. Some of them went a week without having sugar. Some of them didn't have coffee in the morning. Some of them um, didn't tie their shoes. Abby did something interesting. And it didn't hit me until just the other day as I was driving in the car, because as I said before, before all this, I didn't know anything about the Stone of Destiny. I didn't know anything about this stone that has, has gone from all the way from Bethel, the house of God, back in, in Israel to where it is today, in Edinburgh, in a castle. I had no idea about any of this stuff until I had that thought about that palanca. That was the name of it, how goofy. The palanca that Aunt Abby did for me. She slept for a week with a stone in her pillowcase. Isn't that interesting? All these years later, I think of that. Symbolically, it's, it's amazing, okay? But I've talked, of course, on the channel before about the many interesting, significant similarities of Jacob, Israel's life, the patriarch, and my life, as it were. The truth is, just like Jacob, I went to work for Laban, a sheep shearer. I was a, uh, a shepherd, if you will. I was the, the head writer for this Christian network. And just like Jacob Israel, Israel's not my last name. It was a name that I was inspired to use. Now, all of these things, when I chose the name Israel, because I wanted it to be like a, a parable of all of us, I wanted everybody to understand that, you know, who you are at first in the world is not who you become, right? I'm not just Jacob. I am God's champion. I am Israel. I'm the one who prevails. And I knew years ago when I was working for that Christian network, when I was working for Laban, that I would, <laughs> you know, go by that name. Jacob Israel. And now you Google me and I come up as quickly as the patriarch comes up. So this story of the stone was significant to me because look, the similarities are just stunning, right? I'm born June 11th. I'm a Gemini. Jacob was a twin. I know that's reaching, right? Okay, that's fine. You know, my backyard when I was young, I was in pre-kindergarten, was a project called Adam's Garden. Putting 11 new units into Adam's Garden, which is in Old Greenwich, right on the border of Stanford. And it was like my backyard. I lived on the border of Adam's Garden. Significant. It's strange. I was the head writer for World Wrestling. It's strange, right? My name is Jacob. It's strange. It's a coincidence. And I feel a connection to this name, to this story. My daughter's name is Shiloh. When I named her Shiloh, I had no idea of the prophecy of Shiloh that Jacob gave. 
on his uh, deathbed to his children. About how Shiloh would come. Which is interesting because it's all tied into this stone of destiny. Now, whereas Jacob wrestled a man and overcame and was given a new name, I actually literally wrestled uh, a wrestler named Angel. And uh, he actually ended up with a uh, torn hamstring. I choked him out. That was the last time that I did uh, television for wrestling. Isn't that weird? And it didn't hit me until I was on the uh, plane coming home. I literally wrestled an angel. It's cool, right? It gets weirder. Okay, so my novel, which you're all going to hear about soon because it's about to be published yet again. Um, well, it takes place in a town called Bethel. Bethel, the house of God. I started writing that novel when I was in college. And I read the Bible and all that, but I had no idea. It is strange also that I worked for Laban for seven years and, uh, and then left. And now it's been like 14 years almost to the day, Christian television. It's very bizarre. All of the similarities. The fact that when Jacob left, he ended up with a much greater flock of speckled sheep. If you ever took a look at my network's uh, YouTube channel, it's very strange that here I am two years later with this amount of people. So there is so much wonderful symbolism in my life, in your life, in all of our lives, that if you actually just take a moment, you'll understand that these stories are our stories as well. Because as Ecclesiastes says, there's nothing new under the sun. I mean, here's the truth about me, right? Like, I really want to serve God. You know, I just don't, I, I just not, I'm not... I'm not foolish enough to say that I know, because I don't. I don't know. I just know that it's important to love and it's important to seek. And it's important to follow your inspiration. And so I followed my inspiration and it led me on an interesting little path. I started thinking about those bloodlines again. And I thought, well, how interesting would it be if perhaps I was related? What if I did like an Ancestry.com or a 23andMe and all of a sudden I find out I'm related? That thought came into my head and I go, well, that can't be because I'm not from Israel. None of my family's from Israel. And that's why the uh, revelation of this stone of destiny, notice that I say destiny because it's something that's predetermined, that the stone would prove that perhaps I could be, that perhaps you could be. Because I'm from Ireland. My father, who I never met, I never met my biological father. Actually, I, I got his ashes. I did a show about that, remember, two years ago? And I met a bunch of other brothers that I didn't know that I had either. Well, interesting enough, he's from Ireland. Ireland. And it gets weirder than that. Because I think to myself, well, you know, in the scriptures, Jacob he gives himself to God near this stone, and then he's called back to that stone again many, many years later. And I say, well, that's strange too. And then I remember when I was 15 years of age, I visited Ireland. Yeah, that's right. Strange. Stranger still is that I was so alone most of the time I just read the Bible. Sort of dedicated my life to God there. All of a sudden, it all starts coming back to me. Then I find out that they say the Blarney Stone is the other half of the stone. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's a belief that part of the Stone of Destiny is actually the Blarney Stone, which people try to come over and kiss. That was the stone that I was supposed to kiss. And guess what power, guess what power the Blarney Stone gives a person? The gift of gap. The gift of gap. I'm telling you, there's something going on here. So I get a kick out of thinking about this. I get a kick out of thinking about this. I'm going, this would be an adventure. This would be an awesome little documentary. This would be crazy. I did mention the fact that my daughter was born on 9-11, right? And that Mars showed up on the day that she was born some 15 years ago, right? I just did those show, the shows about how Mars once again showed up. Well, 15 years ago, my daughter Shiloh was born. Mars was like hanging right over our head. I actually wrote about it in my novel. I said, September 10th, Mars hangs closer to the Earth than it has in 60,000 years. It reminds men of the light 
that led men from the east to a child in a manger could well be a sign of things to come. So imagine my surprise when 15 years later, that Mars shows up once again, the exact same time. It's interesting, right? More interesting is the fact that this stone is gonna cry out for the leader. You see, the prophecy is that God has, uh, you know, through the bloodlines, God has a leader. Someone who will bring Israel to repentance. Someone who will remind people of the true and living God. Someone who will show people that God is real. So as I'm studying this feverishly and I'm looking up everything I could look up about the stone of destiny, Jacob's pillow, I find that this stone could be the stone that the uh, builders rejected, Christ. This stone, and I'm not saying that the stone is literally Christ, I'm saying that the stone is symbolic of that God was in that place, that was, was within Jacob himself. And that this stone that was consecrated was there to be a reminder that when people forgot, that when people left the truth of God for the lies of the world and the lies of the beast system, right? When the beast is ruling, that that stone once again would cry out and that people would be called to repentance. The fact that this stone, that the remnant, that the lost tribes of Israel, that there could be Scottish and English and Irish and Spanish and anything, that there could be that they were scattered. You see, that's what the scriptures say, was that Israel was scattered to the ends of the earth. The lost tribes of Israel finding themselves once again, like the passage in the book of Tephi, when Jacob comes to know his birthright, therein shall lie his boasting. When he understands who he really is, that's when he can boast at the stone. So, in the story of Jacob, about halfway through his life, right about where I am right now. He left, he left Laban, he has his flocks, things are good, right? But he still feels like he's in the wilderness, right? He still feels like he may be at odds with his older brother, his past, if you will. At that moment, he cries out to God and he says, yeah, I know you have a purpose for me, but look at me, look at me, what do I got? I got nothing. I'm two camps, right? <laughs> I got two families. It's my family. It's a blended family. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Yeah, my first wife left me and I raised my uh, two children, no one shall on my own. And, and then I, I, I got to raise Anthony as well because we both have custody. And then we have Ethan. So it's like we have two tribes ourselves. But that's, that, at this point in my life, I'm like, Lord, what do I mean, really? Yeah, I know that there's a purpose for me. I know there's a purpose for us all. And that's what I talk about. See, my channel, I'm hoping that I can encourage all of you in your faith that you can see me step out in faith and talk about these amazing and incredibly strange things and step out and believe something that is impossible. But if it is true, could you imagine what could change? So I'm thinking to myself, why not visit this stone? Why not? find a way to get my butt uh, to Scotland so that I can actually be there in the presence and bring you along with me, show you that, teach you a little bit about that history and what it really means. Because this thing, look at it. I mean, it's paraded around. The first glimpse of the stone back home. A ceremonial journey marked its return seven centuries after being taken by the English a symbol of nationhood to thousands who watched. This is not a little thing. This is probably, it's called one of the most prized possessions of Scotland. This thing that I didn't even know existed until a couple of days ago. This thing that could be the stone that crushes the toes of that beast system. Remember the stone? This stone that was not made by man's hands. It was just there that's been carried all the way down. And this stone that has chosen the king, that is gonna cry out the prophecy in the end when people have turned away, that the stone would cry out, how cool would it be? We get there, right? Take a little video record, there's an earthquake. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but it's cool to think about these things. We have to have faith in more. We have to understand that maybe God does have a plan for all of us. And that's why I'm thinking, the stone of destiny could in fact be part of what this channel is all about. 
getting us there, taking on a new adventure. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to go there because I got to tell you something. I don't really have the cash for it. That's for sure. But I will tell you, I already talked to a travel agent. That's the truth. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And on Wednesday, I'm finding out because I got to tell you something. I think that life should be an adventure. And why not? For some reason, I am now known as Jacob Israel, right? For some reason, I hear in my head this memory, and I think about that palanca, that stone that she slept on. And then I find all of this out in the prophecy of the days that, are, that we're in. Now look, the bottom line is, I'd be lying to you. I wrote about it years ago. I said that when I turned around 45, people would start to know who I am. I've been very clear that I believe that the channel is going to get much, much bigger. And I've said for many years, long before I had all of you, supporting me and helping me and liking and sharing and passing around before any of that i knew i knew i had a plan and part of that plan was helping people to ask for god themselves to say teach me the truth no matter what the cost so i want to go there and i want to uh, encourage all of you by bringing you all with me and i'm hoping i'm going to get there and i'm hoping it's going to happen but the stone of destiny is calling Jesus said in his prophecy, he said that if people wouldn't return to the truth, that if people wouldn't praise God, that if people lost their faith, if people were just too busy like back in the day, that even the stones would cry out. I think that's cool. And I love each and every one of you, and I hope that you do. Share the video around. Tell a friend. Learn a little bit more about all this stuff because it's cool. It's very, very cool. I love each and every one of you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Jacob Israel. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this channel around. If these shows have helped you, help Jacob to reach more any way you can and have the best day ever.